Are you ready for liftoff? Don't miss Canada's number one cannabis conference and trade show, Lift & Co Expo, coming this May 12-15 to to Metro Toronto Convention Centre. Level up your industry intel at the Lift Cannabis Business Conference. Connect with movers and shakers from across the cannabis industry and preview new products and services from 250-plus exhibitors. Plus, everyone loves Lift & Co Expo's prizes, live music, and more. Visit liftexpo.ca for tickets. That's liftexpo.ca. From a studio high above the clouds of the Okanagan Valley, this is the Cannabis Podcast. Exploring the world of Canadian cannabis culture, one toke at a time. Now, here's your host and bud tender, Gary Johnston. And welcome back once more to the Cannabis Podcast. This is episode 95. Your first time here? Well, an especially warm welcome for you. And if you're coming back because you've been here for a while... Thanks so much for listening. I really appreciate you being here. Let's remember that this program is intended only for those 19 or older in your jurisdiction and is intended purely for entertainment purposes. You should always consume cannabis responsibly. This episode, well, let's see. We have a couple of stories on our federal government. Whether it's their reluctance to advance the cannabis agenda, I'm not sure, or whether it's just ignorance, I'm also not sure. (laughs) A couple of stories from my buddy at the Okanagan ZE, David Wiley, on cannabis and the federal government. We'll dive into those. We're also going to look at a great story on the top trends in terpenes in 2022. If you remember back when cannabis was legalized in 2018 and we started this podcast, no one was talking about terpenes then. And now we complain if the terpenes aren't on the label. We have come a long way in three years. Plus, we have a story from Leafly, very timely. This is how to grow garden weed in different parts of Canada. Things to be aware of. On Cultivar Corner, we are going to have some Simply Bear organic white runts. Sounds pretty tasty. All of that and more on episode 95 of the Cannabis Podcast. And before we get started, let me thank a couple of uh, supporters. William? William has become a subscriber. Thanks for coming along for the ride, William. Appreciate you being here. William now has access to all of the videos from Cultivar Corner, plus a few other extras. And I also want to thank Holly. Holly discovered that if you go to buymeacoffee.com slash cannabis podcast, not only can you become a subscriber or if you feel like it, buy me a doobie or two, you can also buy the cannabis podcast stickers. The price is pretty well just what it costs me to mail it to you. I could not believe it when I went to the post office to mail my first one out and I couldn't believe how expensive it was. So basically, that's what the cost is. If you feel so inclined, they're real good quality stickers. The die cast of just the Cannabis Podcast logo or the circle that has the Bud Mike symbol with the Cannabis Podcast logo on top of that. Both of them are pretty cool. If you feel so inclined to do any of those things, you can do it at buymeacoffee.com slash Cannabis Podcast. And of course, I would be a little remiss if I didn't talk about what's coming up this week in Kelowna. That is the BC Cannabis Summit hosted by Acres, the Association of Canadian Cannabis Retailers, and the BC Craft Farmers Co-op. The BC Craft Cannabis Summit kicks off this Wednesday in Kelowna. April 20th is the day, a good day, as we all know. (laughs) Here are some of the quotes from the people putting this conference on. We are thrilled to have this opportunity to support BCCFC and Acres and to network with independent BC cannabis retailers to expand the weed pool nationally. That from Jim Southam, Saskatchewan Weed Pool. Kelowna and the Okanagan Valley have been early leaders in understanding the potential of BC's craft cannabis sector. With a rich agricultural history, outstanding facilities, and reputation, Kelowna is a natural choice to host our first conference and trade show. That from Nicole Post, BC CFC president. This event is an opportunity to establish our craft farmers and independent retailers as job creators, innovators, and engines of sustainable economic growth that can support Canada's post-pandemic recovery. Jacqueline Pahota, Acres Executive Director. Those are just some of the people talking about the BC Craft Cannabis Summit. Coming up this week in Kelowna, I'm going to be appearing in the panel for the end of stigma in the digital communications age. Looking forward to that conversation. And in fact, I'm looking forward to just meeting a whole bunch of people that I've seen and spoken with over the last few years in the cannabis world. We all get together and who knows, maybe even share a joint in those cannabis consumption spaces. The BC Cannabis Summit, it kicks off this week. I'll have a whole bunch of details for you of what happened at the conference in upcoming episodes. But don't forget, this Wednesday at 420, the BC Cannabis Summit in Kelowna kicks off. Now let's get to the stories. 
And we're going to start with the folly of our federal government in cannabis. Thanks to my friend David Wiley at OkanaganZ.com, we'll start with, they said cannabis nine times in the federal budget. It may not seem like a lot, but cannabis was mentioned a total of nine times in the 2022 federal budget document. That's eight more times than in 2021. The proposed budget, unveiled Thursday in Ottawa by the Liberal Party, hints toward a more open and productive relationship with the cannabis industry. In the nearly four years since legalization in 2018, the Liberals have practically worn oven mitts while handling the hot potato of pot policy. Cannabis has been seen only through the lenses of public health and crime. This latest budget puts the growing weed industry as an important economic consideration nationally and internationally. Called a plan to grow our economy and make life more affordable, the budget includes a section titled Engaging the Cannabis Sector. What does that entail? As a relatively new sector of the Canadian economy, it's important that the federal government and all stakeholders have a clear understanding of the challenges and opportunities that are facing Canada's legal cannabis sector says the budget document. Budget 2022 proposes launching a new cannabis strategy table that will support an ongoing dialogue with businesses and stakeholders in the cannabis sector. The cannabis strategy table would be led by the Department of Innovation, Science and Economic Development. That's a notable departure from Health Canada handling the file and overseeing the creation and interpretation of the rules that regulate everything, including licensing, Growing, Packaging, Medical, and Marketing The Department of Innovation, Science, and Economic Development's overall mandate is to improve conditions for investment, enhance Canada's innovation performance, increase Canada's share of global trade, and build a fair, efficient, and competitive marketplace. The Federal Strategy Table will create opportunities for the government to hear from industry leaders and identify ways to work together to grow the legal cannabis sector in Canada, says the budget document. So what does this actually mean? The nine mentions of the word cannabis in the 300-plus page Canadian budget document signaled that the government is acknowledging pot as a growing global opportunity that requires federal strategy. In the 2021 budget document, it was mentioned only one time in relation to an Indigenous tax option. The new cannabis strategy table is a long overdue invitation for the pot industry to sit at the table. But wait, there's probably more. One of the most talked about social justice issues in Canada has been the criminal records that have dogged people over small cannabis crimes. The newly minted Liberal NDP deal carries potential for further changes to cannabis regulations, notably on the issue of expungements. The NDP championed expungements over pardons during its last election campaign and may use its new position to push that forward. Well, thank you, Mr. Wiley, for that perspective on our federal government. And we're going to turn to another story from Mr. Wiley, on another perspective on our federal government, where one of our federal ministers doesn't shine too terribly bright. (laughs) It's going to take time and effort, along with some well-placed questions, to make pot a comfortable political talking point. The Prime Minister and his MPs have hit the road to promote the 2022 federal budget. As part of that media tour this week, Minister of International Development Harjit Sanjan came to Kelowna. Though the budget has identified the Canadian weed industry as worthy of economic input and support, Sanjan's visit underscored that there's still work to do to put cannabis on the radar of those with important political portfolios. With a wall of live plants as his backdrop, inside the Innovation Centre, the high-profile cabinet minister spent about 25 minutes talking to reporters. As minister responsible for the Pacific Economic Development Agency of Canada, Vancouver South MP Sejan has a key role in helping grow the region's economy, which includes a famous export, BC Bud. However, Sejan didn't have anything of substance to say on the topic. Rather, the minister was caught off guard by questions on cannabis, even though they were sent by email beforehand. The OZ asked, Could you comment on how the Pacific Regional Economic Development Agency can support the legal Canadian cannabis industry? particularly the B.C. craft cannabis industry, both federally and internationally. Uh, I won't be able to give you an answer on that directly because I'm not going to. Uh, I haven't really, um, uh, that's a very niche piece that you just mentioned there, struggled the seasoned politician. 
I have looked at a lot of other areas where we are already operating, and we will work with, based on our program we have, any profit and non-profit organizations supporting economic growth. If companies, organizations feel that the Pacific Development Agency can help, we would be there for that support. It seemed lost on the minister that cannabis companies across Canada already have well-established international cannabis operations all over the world, and even ship live genetics overseas to South America. We also asked a follow-up question. Cannabis was mentioned a handful of times in the budget, particularly around the creation of a strategic cannabis table. What are you planning on doing to work with provincial and indigenous governments around cannabis? That answer was also short on info. When it comes to... I don't have the exact details of the question you asked me. Sejan said he would have staff follow up, but they haven't heard back yet. There are some pretty simple key messages on the topic that federal politicians can keep in their back pocket. For example, cannabis has contributed $43.5 billion to Canada's gross domestic products since recreational weed was legalized in October 2018. There are more than 100,000 Canadian jobs connected with the cannabis industry, and the cannabis industry has added $15.1 billion in Canadian tax revenues. As usual, an excellent job of reporting by David Wiley at OkanaganZ.com. Do you think our federal government is ever really going to understand cannabis? Exploring the world of Canadian cannabis culture, one toke at a time. This is the Cannabis Podcast. And let me assure you that I have taken care of that one toke at a time in preparation for this section. In fact, this is something that's going to be featured on a future Cultivar Corner. Some new entries from the Kootenays Sweetgrass Cannabis Mint Chocolate Chip. Hmm. That's what I'm imbibing in getting ready for this story from Leafly.ca, written by Radona Kalinchuk on how to grow weed in your home garden across the country. Now, I'll cover the summary of the story. For all the details in each province, dive into the story itself. If you look up the word weed in the dictionary, it's defined as an undesirable or troublesome plant, one that grows profusely where it's not wanted. I don't know about you, but cannabis is a weed I want in my garden. Not that long ago, gardeners strived to have a weed-free garden. Times have changed, and many are adding weed back into the garden, albeit a different kind of weed. Cannabis can be a great addition to your outdoor space, taking advantage of all that Mother Nature has to offer. Simply start some cannabis seeds alongside your flowers and vegetables in the spring to enjoy incredible sun-grown weed harvested in the fall. It's wise when planting a weed garden or any garden to sit down with a calendar and plan things out ahead of time. Aspiring gardeners can use the first frost date in the fall to count the weeks backwards. This gives you an idea of when you need to start the seeds in spring. In British Columbia, you can grow four non-medical plants per home. The home of BC Bud, beautiful ocean views, and most diverse hardiness zones in Canada. Many parts of British Columbia have a long season for outdoor growing. With a longer season, you can grow cultivars with longer flowering times of 10 to 12 weeks. There are some beautiful, well-known cultivars that have been bred to be autoflower and would do well in BC climate. Bruce Banner, Gorilla Glue, and Girl Scout Cookies are just a few. In Alberta and Saskatchewan, like most provinces, where you live will dictate what your season could look like. Similar to BC, areas at higher elevations and mountainous areas tend to be cooler. A southern-facing garden is an optimal choice in this environment. The goal is to have at least eight hours of sunlight a day. The options for shorter flowering cultivars have grown over time. Certain cultivars go from seed to flowering in as early as 40 to 50 days. Afghani Kush, Northern Lights and Amnesia Haze all have short flowering periods and are beautiful choices for growing outside. In Ontario, they have the second most diverse growing zones after BC. The northern part of Ontario is heavily forested and can experience very cold winters with heavy snow. In southern Ontario, the growing seasons are substantially longer and warmer. Garden enthusiasts should be mindful in areas with hot summer temperatures when planting their gardens. Having access to easy watering is very important in these conditions because no one wants to be hauling water at 40 degrees Celsius. Blue Cheese, Skywalker OG, and Black Widow are all mold-resistant cultivars to consider for the high humidity and wet fall weather you can experience in Ontario. Prince Edward Island is known for potatoes and red-colored soil. PEI is formed on sandstone. This mixture of sand and other substances is held together with iron oxide, giving the soil a reddish color. 
The temperature growing season make the province a favorable climate for outdoor cannabis gardens with hardiness zones of 5 and 6. Cannabis with slightly longer flowering days do well in PEI. In New Brunswick, the province has a semi-moderated growing season. Two's land race, Cush cultivars bred for unforgiving weather. For this climate, cultivars bred with mold resistance properties are ideal. It's important for when the hard rains arrive in September and October. In Nova Scotia, the length of the growing season varies between 100 and 200 days, said to be some of the best outdoor growing weather in Canada. The hardiness zones of 5 and 6 make it a beautiful zone to grow cannabis outdoors. The Nova Scotia climate offers the opportunity to grow a vast assortment of cultivars with long flowering times. Bruce Banner, Dosido, and Blueberry Headband are beautiful long flowering options. In Newfoundland and Labrador, the rugged coastlines, lakes, rivers, and mountains make up the landscape. A seven hardiness zone can be a difficult climate for gardeners. At times, extreme weather and a cool climate can make for a challenging season. To ensure you have a successful harvest, growing in a portable container is a must. Tighter quarters trigger the plants to flower sooner, important in areas with unpredictable seasons. In the Yukon, they hold the record for the longest cold spells in all of North America. With three growing zones, the options for growing outdoors are limited to auto-flowering cultivars. Container growing will give you the most control when poor weather is an issue, and seeds will need to be started indoors. In the Northwest Territories, the territory has a climate designation of subarctic, dry summer subarctic, and tundra. In lower parts of the territory, the garden season is longer. It has three hardiness zones, with the shortest season of two days in Saks Harbor. The city of Yellowknife has a fairly long season of 102 days. Nunavut is the largest and most northern territory in Canada, with climate designations of subarctic, tundra, and ice cap. Its hardiness zone is 0A, and most regions experience a polar climate. Container-grown auto-flowering cultivars started indoors are the best option for extremely short outdoor seasons. Supercritical, Thunder Bloody Mary, and Auto Shark are incredibly quick from start to finish, perfect for these northern provinces and territories. And at this time, cannabis gardening at home is illegal in both Manitoba and Quebec. I'm sorry to the people living in those provinces that you don't have the ability to grow like the rest of us do. Talk to your government, as I know some of you are doing, and trying to change that. Thanks again to Radona Kalinchuk of Leafly.ca, and I hope you have great success growing cannabis this year. At Maverick Public Relations, growing your influence is their specialty. NPR works with remarkable companies in the cannabis industry to deliver exceptional results. Experience big agency expertise and outstanding client service delivered by seasoned and knowledgeable experts. Connect with Maverick PR today and move your company to the next level. Visit them today at www.themaverickpr.com. THC, CBD, terpene profiles, what's in me? Oh, please explain to me. Go to the corner, go to the corner, oh yeah. Go to the corner, please explain this stuff to me. On Cultivar Corner today, we're going back to the West Coast. In fact, this is something that we have covered before, product from Simply Bear, Rubicon Organics is the parent company. They have a couple of subsidiaries that they're dealing with now, 1964, Homestead, and Simply Bear. And what we're trying today, in one of their lovely little orange glass jars, is Simply Bear Organic White Runts. Now it's R-A-N-T-Z. I'm going to assume that there's an A in there, and call it Runts, or perhaps a U. <laughs> um, spelling is not my forte <laughs> this early in the day. But, this was really intriguing to me because it kind of was a little reminiscent of a cultivar that we tried last year that I just became enamored with, and that was Quirkle. And what enamored me so much with a Quirkle was just every single time I opened the package and smelled the weed, mm, it just gave me a good sense, and I thought, that's going to have a really good effect on me. I felt much the same thing. The first time I opened a jar of white runs, just those fruity, sweet notes. And then as you grind it up, like when I was grinding that flour up with my vaporizer, or rather with my grinder, uh, it got so much more pungent. Now, I've got some video, so you can take a peek at the flour as it exists, and it was 3.5, right on the money. 
not huge buds, but really well cured. Evidenced by the fact that, as you'll see in the video that I took, one of the buds kind of fell apart as I was twirling it in my fingers because it was just cured so well. Don't really need to use a grinder on this. You can literally use your hands to grind this flower down, and I'm always a fan of that. Really love it. So deep, dark greens here. Take a look at the jeweler's loop. Put the light on the other side here. No, that's the right side. <laughs> and what do we got? Fair amount of tramber, uh, amber trichomes. Fairly vast fields in there and these lovely little green buds. And it just has such a delight. See, now there you go. That bud has kind of fallen apart in my fingers. <laughs> That's how well cured it is. It kind of collapses in your hands as you're trying to smoke it. Or as you're trying to prepare it. Let's give you a little more, more detail. This is BC Organic White Runs. Organic certified hybrid flower that lives up to the hype. This delicious coveted flower is a cross of popular Skittles and Gelato cultivars. The aromas of sweet candy. Mmm... Now, they say the aromas of sweet candy aromas are complementary with earthy citrus undertones. Yeah. And I would say, and as, and as soon as you grind that up and you pinch it in your fingers, oh, those, those sweet candy aromas just keep bursting forth. Mm. So the green and hints of purple buds covered with a layer of crystal-like trichomes. And again, I would agree with that statement after taking a peek at the jeweler's loop. And seeing all of those trichomes. Oh, wow. And I just came into an area that is just full of amber. Oh, and such a beautiful, sweet aroma. I really, really like it. Now, this is supposed to have THC of 20 to 26% and terpenes of greater than 2%. On the jar, are they telling me what the terpenes are? Yes, they are. That's why it's so darn aromatic. Terpenes, 3.54% pretty high up on the terpene range. 3.54. And here's the other beauty. If you go to the Simply Bear Organics website and you scroll down to where I have a thing on the white runs, down at the bottom, we got batch notes where we literally can look at the lot and the very specifics of what that lot is doing. So on the jar, it's telling me that my THC is at 20.2%. This is lot 98-002. Package December 9th little old perhaps, but not seeing that in the jar. And when we look at that batch in their notes, here's what it is. THC 20.23%. That's bang on. Terpenes 3.54%. That's bang on. And now here are the terpenes in white runs. Limonene 1.18%. Transcaryophylline at 0.55%. Linalool at 0.42%. And beta myrcene at 0.26%. So those values are kind of leading me to believe that this could be very much leaning to a sativa with that limonene at 1.18% and that beta myrcene way below 0.5 down at 0.26%. I love the terpene profile. These are very similar to the terpenes that just hit me so hard in that quirkle. So Simply Bear Organics, white runts. I've got the vaporizer already. Let me get that warmed up. While that's warming up, let's give a strike to the joint and see what Simply Bear Organic White Runs taste like. And once again, I've been a good boy. This is my first exposure to cannabis for the day, so we're going to get a true effect of, of what Cultivar Corner should be revealing to us. Oh, just like with the Quirkle, those sweet <coughs> notes are coming through the smoke as well. No. <coughs> Perhaps a little harsher than I would anticipate or expect with the first joke of the day. Is that an indication that this has been sitting a little bit longer? <coughs> Again, packaged in December. Now I'm crossing that, what, three-month threshold, thereabouts? I love the smell of it, though. Mm, so sweet and, and such delightful aromas when you stick your nose in that lovely little glass jar. <laughs> so, much like we experienced with Quirkle, which I think was at about 19% THC, the BC Organic White Run sitting at 20.2%. 
So relatively low in THC perspectives from what we're used to seeing these days, but it's starting to have an effect on me. So the joint's going, the Crafty Plus is all up to speed. Let's see what Simply Organic, Simply Bare Organic BC White Runs taste like. I'm always astounded by how absolutely delightful it tastes <laughs> when you get it into the vaporizer. Mm. Oh, really nice. Really, really nice. Definitely aromas of sweet candy complemented with some earthy citrus undertones. The limonene giving us our citrus. That beta myrcene giving us those earthy tones. And here I go in my two-fisted toking stance. Once more, <laughs> ready to go. And once more, here come the happy eyes. Mm. Delightful taste. Just simply a delightful taste, a lovely aroma. Once I got over that initial coughing fit with starting the joint, which I think was just the first smoke of the day. It's become really smooth as we take a look at it. I don't have a lot of black ash. Looks like pretty white ash coming off of that. The happy eyes are jumping into form. Mm. And there it is. There's the high that I'm always looking for every single time we start a cultivar corner. And I'm so happy that we got there. I was a little concerned that my preoccupation with thinking that this had a lot of similarities to Quirkle in terms of flavor and taste and, and aroma, that I might've been setting myself up for not perhaps the same effect. And again, in both cases, this is not a knock you on your butt kind of high THC. This is I want to get stoned and I want to enjoy the day kind of THC. I'm stoned and I'm going to enjoy the day. <laughs> and I guess we don't need much more than that. And so once again, this is BC Organic White Runts from Simply Bear, who always package in their delightful glass jars. You don't have to worry about storage this or storing this, that's a pretty good place to store it. And as you can see, since it's getting harder for me to form words, I appear to have accomplished that THC high that we're after. But that never stops me, does it? <laughs> I always go for just a little bit more to see how hard we can push it. I've liked most of the stuff that we've gotten from Simply Bear Organics. They do a fabulous job. Truly some great BC weed. So if you're looking for something in the mid-range of THC, uh, but has lots of fruity taste and a delightful aroma, give Simply Bear White Runs a try. From a studio high above the clouds of the Okanagan Valley, this is the Cannabis Podcast. And for our next story, we're going to canchirp.ca for the top trends in terpenes in 2022. And a little bit of a preamble before I get into the story, because this is the part of the cannabis industry that I find absolutely amazing how fast this has developed since legalization in October of 2018. As mentioned before, when that happened, through the first, I think the first time we mentioned terpenes in the episodes of the Cannabis Podcast was around episode seven or episode eight. And that was just a very early discussion about terpenes. And between that time and now, we have terpenes on almost all labels. We're talking the percentage of terpenes that's in the cannabis that was never even talked about when legalization started. Fascinating area of the industry. And I, th I think this is going to be a really interesting article. So let me get to it. It's 2022. And the cannabis industry is booming. 
Terpenes have become a hot topic in recent years as researchers have begun to understand how these compounds affect the body. Each terpene has its own unique set of properties, which can vary depending on the strain of cannabis it's found in. As the industry continues to grow, licensed producers are focusing more on preserving terpenes and listing total terpene content on their products. In this article, we'll discuss the top terpene trends emerging in the cannabis industry. Now a refresher. What are terpenes? Terpenes are organic natural compounds found in various plants, including cannabis. These compounds are responsible for the plant's unique smell and flavor. In weed, terpenes work on their own or synergistically with THC, CBD, and other cannabinoids to produce different effects in the body. This is why two strains of cannabis with the same THC content can have a very different array of effects. The most popular natural plant terpenes are limonene, stimulating, energizing, and prominent in sativa-characterized strains, linalool, sedating, relaxing and noticeable in indica plants, pinene, an anti-anxiety and commonly found in strains with high THC content, also present in pine needles, caryophylline, anti-inflammatory. This terpene is also in black pepper, cloves, and cinnamon. Humulene, appetite suppressant found in hops and woody plants. Terpenes play a meaningful role in how cannabis affects the body. So the next time you're at your local dispensary, ask the bud tender about the terpene content of different strains. You may find a strain out there that's perfect for your needs. Chemovars. Sativa and indica terms are becoming less relevant. The first trend is the use of chemovars to classify strains as opposed to typical indica versus sativa categorization. Chemovars are a new classification system that considers the chemical composition of cannabis, including its terpene content. The system is becoming increasingly popular as it allows for more accurate predictions of how a particular strain will affect the body. Chemovars are becoming an essential part of product differentiation because they allow licensed producers to list the terpene content of their products. This is important because customers are beginning to understand how terpenes can affect the overall effects of cannabis and carefully select terpene-specific strains. Reading that paragraph as a bit of a sidebar, well, a huge sidebar if you want, <laughs> I seem to remember predicting um, some time ago, as many others have, I'm not suggesting that I was the first one and that it's, that it's my idea, but that we are eventually going to get to the state that people are going to buy their cannabis based on their terpene profile. Ah, this is fabulous to see this coming to fruition. Number two, the curing, drying, and packaging processes. The second trend focuses on preserving terpenes using the drying and curing process. In the past, many licensed producers have used automated machines to dry and trim their cannabis. However, these machines often damage the delicate terpene molecules, which can reduce the overall quality of the product. As a result, more and more licensed producers are using manual methods to dry and trim their cannabis. This allows them to control the environment and avoid damaging the terpenes. Carefully handling terpenes will enable producers to have better control in the preservation of terpene benefits, as well as the scent, taste, and effects to produce a variety of products consumers love. In addition, many licensed producers are using new technologies to extract terpenes from plant material. This allows them to add these compounds back into the final product, ensuring that it has the desired effect. Number three, terpene infusions. As we learn more about terpenes, research and evidence allows us to apply them to a broader range of fields, such as cosmetics and health products, beverages, mixed drinks, aromatherapy, and cleaning supplies. The trend of terpene-infused products is expected to grow in popularity as we learn more about how these compounds are beneficial. Some of the most popular terpene-infused products on the market today include soap. Cannabis terpene oil can create a pleasant smell and nourishing soap. Lotion. Calming terpenes and terpene oil can add moisturizing properties to lotion. Terpenes in weed can add a pleasant aroma and soothing effect to bath bombs. Terpene therapy is becoming an increasingly popular way to relax and improve mood with aromatherapy. Natural terpenes can help formulate cleaning products that are effective and safe to use. Adding a specific blend of terpenes to full-spectrum oils and extracts can allow customers to customize their experience. We're also seeing terpenes becoming an ingredient in cocktails, beers, and to add a little zing to gourmet dishes. Number four, terpene-infused isolates. The final trend is the use of terpene-infused isolates. 
Isolates are a type of cannabis extract that contains only one cannabinoid. This allows for a more potent product that treats specific conditions. Terpene-infused isolates are becoming increasingly popular as they allow for more precise dosing of terpenes and the resultant scent, taste, and effect. These terpene blends and isolates can be used with cannabinoids or on their own for those who want to avoid consuming THC. Top terpene companies recognize the importance of terpenes and are investing in research and development to create new products for various conditions. 5. Terpene awareness is growing. As you can see, terpenes are playing an increasingly important role in the cannabis industry and expanding into the broader wellness category. This trend will continue as people become aware of the benefits of natural terpenes. Additionally, legal cannabis stores and dispensaries in Canada are further driving awareness and education of terpenes' medicinal uses, how to use terpenes, and what terpenes are used for. In fact, a simple Google keyword trend search for terpenes has resulted in a 500% increase in searches over the previous five years. Check your local retailer and ask them about terpenes. The trend toward using terpenes to produce more effective cannabis products is likely to continue in the coming years. As more research discovers how these compounds affect the body, we will likely see more products on the market designed to treat certain conditions. Relaxing terpenes and cannabis strain terpene profiles will continue to be popular as people look for natural ways to relax and reduce stress. Additionally, new technologies will allow for more precise dosing of terpenes. This will be especially beneficial for those wanting to enjoy specific cannabinoid and terpene-infused isolates formulated for terpene therapy. These are just some of the top terpene trends emerging in the cannabis industry. As the industry grows, we can expect to focus more on preserving terpenes and using chemovars to classify strains in cannabis products. This will allow consumers to better understand how different strains and terpenes affect their bodies and help them find terpenes for sale that are perfect for their needs. As the cannabis industry continues to grow, we can expect to see more innovative products and technologies utilize terpenes. These trends are just the beginning of what is sure to be an exciting future for terpenes and terpene therapy. And that's from canterp.ca. A lot of it I agree with, a lot of it we've kind of been watching and foreseeing here on the Cannabis Podcast in our explorations over terpenes over the last three years. What's your favorite terpene? Have you figured out what your terpene profile is? Maybe that's something you should investigate. And let me finish with another shout out, this one to Ray from the East Coast. He contacted me through the website. Hey, Ray, thanks for listening. And I appreciate the suggestions too. If you ever have a comment on anything you hear on the Cannabis Podcast, send a note to info at CannabisPodcast.com. The handle is at Cannabis Podcast for Twitter and Instagram. Weed Podcast for Facebook. And if you like what you hear and you want to support the Cannabis Podcast, click on buymeacoffee.com slash Cannabis Podcast and you can explore your options. I am so happy that you are here. Thank you so much for listening. That's it for episode 95 of the Cannabis Podcast. From the Cannabis Infused Studio, high above the Okanagan Valley, this was the Cannabis Podcast.